Hey, folks, welcome to another episode of Draft Talk on Pittsburgh Sports Live. I'm Alan Saunders. That's Nick Farabaugh. We are talking the NFL Draft and the Pittsburgh Steelers every weekday leading up to the 2022 NFL Draft late in April. Uh, so far, we've been hitting the pro day circuit pretty heavy. We've been talking a lot about who the Steelers are looking at because the Steelers generally tell us who they're interested in be, by where they send general manager Kevin Colbert and head coach Mike Tomlin. Tomlin wasn't on the road this week because he was in NFL meetings, but Colbert was and was at his fourth pro day of the week on Wednesday at Alabama. Um, an interesting group of prospects at Alabama. I think a lot of guys that really fit what this, where the Steelers have needs and, and at the right slots, sort of like what we talked about with the guys at NC state yesterday, but maybe at a higher level, um, I think wide receiver is a need for the Steelers and a big one. And Jamison Williams and John Mechie both could fit that uh, slot. I think they have a needed inside linebacker and Christian Harris fits. Um, and they sent defensive backs coach Grady Brown, which would not have been my choice. I probably would have gone with a receivers coach or linebackers coach, but they obviously haven't needed the secondary. Nick, what, uh, what do you think Grady Brown w- went to, to Tuscaloosa to see? And, and where do the Steelers DB needs line up with what Alabama has? Well, Jalen Armour Davis was kind of the big one, and he had he did the full full thing, the full workout. So Grady Brown got to see what he he wanted to see. Uh, he he did the drills, he ran. So Jalen Armour Davis did everything. And when I looked at Jalen Armour Davis, you know, honestly played better than Josh Job did this year. And Josh Job's another corner there didn't work out, but Armour Davis did the whole thing. So that would be one of the guys that you would imagine would be the main attraction, right? I mean, you would want to go there to see Jalen Armour Davis, kind of a mid-round guy. Obviously, Daniel Wright as well as there, a safety from Alabama, one of their captains and a leader off the field. Uh, I think he ran a 4-3-7 yesterday, so he really came out and and ran well. Um, Really, when you look at the two that he was probably there to see, was probably Armour Davis and Wright. Again, Job did not work out. And so those guys line up, both all mid-round options probably for – for the Steelers at safety or corner outside corner is going to be where Omar Davis plays. And obviously Wright is more of a strong safety type. So that, that fits exactly with what they've been looking for and what they probably need in the secondary. Yeah. And then obviously Evan Neal is uh, the big attraction in Alabama. I don't think the pirates are in much or the yeah, pirates Steelers are in much of a position to draft him. Uh, he'll probably be a top 10 pick, but another one of those big tackles that Kevin Colbert was there to see in person I don't know if that means anything, if, if it's just that he wanted to see some other players at those schools, but I, I don't know. That's, that's two of the big three tackles that he's now seen. Um, that has not, did not see Charles Cross at Mississippi state, but I think that's, I think tackle is still a position where the Steelers have a need. I'm just not sure. Unlike those other guys we talked about, there's a pick that makes sense for them at 20. No, there's not going to be. And again, the one that would make sense is Trevor Penning who is consistently going up forward, so he might not even be there at 20, but they didn't send any large contingent to go see him, and and that's kind of your indicator of they're very interested in a small school, guys. There has to be a sizable contingent there, position coach, whatever it might be, to go see him, Uh, and they didn't do that. I don't know who else they would get. Raymond feels like a reach. Fale lays a reach. You know, there are some other guys in the round two, three, four area, like a Max Mitchell, um, a Tyler Smith, a Sean Ryan, uh, someone like that, that you kind of like, Rasheed Walker. Uh, there, there are options there. The, the difference is, though, it, it's kind of like the top three, and then you have Penning, who is going to be a divisive prospect regardless. I wouldn't take Penning that early anyways, but he might go earlier than that. And so – there but outside of him there really is not a lot to go with and so I think that the Steelers are putting themselves in a position to probably draft a mid-round tackle that seems like what it will likely be yeah I agree and I don't think Alabama has they do have another offensive lineman in this group but he's not a tackle and I don't think he's a mid-round guy more of a late in the draft guy um the other pro days that they were at yesterday, it looked like they had Brandon Hunt at Maryland. Uh, there's a couple players I like at Maryland. Um, safety Nick Cross and uh, Chick. Uh, uh, I'm not. I don't Chig know how to pronounce Oconquo. Oconquo. Uh, Chick Oconquo, and he is 
uh, one of my favorite players in this draft just because he's fun and he's like a, I don't know what to call him. I guess a fullback, H back, tight end combo, but he's a big, strong dude with, with interesting burst and a guy that Matt Canada coached in college. And obviously they're familiar with, uh, they certainly, we haven't talked about it. They do. I feel like have a need at tight end. It's not as pressing as some of the needs of other positions, but they have not resigned Eric Ebron. Uh, and w- with respect to Kevin Rader and his special teams ability, he's not really much of an offensive threat. Um, and, and I think Jack entry really came on last year. And so that sort of minimizes how big of a need it is, but I do think they need a third body in there that can maybe do something just a little bit different than what Fryermuth and Gantry bring to the table skill set wise. And Okonkwo is definitely that. Athletic can work him at fullback. He's an H back. So if you're running that split zone, he can be the guy that pulls across the formation and kicks out on the end there. Uh, he's, he's a really interesting player. And you'll see Matt Canada, when he was was offense coordinator slash interim head coach there, he would use Okonkwo on jet sweeps. I mean, that was the type of athlete that Chico Okonkwo was. The guy runs extremely well. I mean, the burst he has, he has really good long speed for what he has. I mean, really a guy that continues to just stick out. And, and you look at what he did at the combine. I mean, he ran a four five two, had a one five nine split. So that's explosiveness and good speed. And yesterday tested well as well had i think it had a 10-6 broad uh, to go with a 37 inch vertical so there's explosiveness there he's he's a really good athlete can do a lot of different things catch balls out of the backfield if you're looking for a third guy that can you know be a solid special team or two he could be an up back he can work in that punt formation he's a guy that has experience doing that he's been experienced on kick coverage so he has plenty of special teams experience too i mean Chico Kako kind of screams Steelers connections with between the Canada connections and between what they need and what they value. That is the type of player Chico Kanko is. The question is, did he kind of test out of their range? Is a team going to take a chance on him maybe in like round four? I don't think the Steelers will take him that early. Yeah, they have too many needs that are greater than a third tight end to go with their other two pretty good tight ends for me to see them addressing that position really maybe before the fifth round at the very earliest. But I do think they will draft a tight end or a fullback, H-back, somebody in that realm. Also, like Derek Watt, I I don't think has been very impressive and certainly could be upgraded on if you can get one player that can do both of those jobs and maybe you save yourself a roster spot. Um, And so... Uh, I, I absolutely think that now Nick cross uh, on the other hand, it fits sort of exactly what the Steelers are looking for at strong safety. Maybe not a guy that would be projected to start this year, but certainly a player that fits the mold of what they're looking for in a strong safety, what they've, they've had in a strong safety and another player very familiar to the Steelers. He was um, <laughs> Mike Tomlin's son's roommate at Maryland. He told us, uh, at the combine and uh, said he obviously got to know coach Tomlin pretty well. I think cross is a physical safety, more of an in the box player than some of the other guys we've talked about is that uh, maybe more of a cover two strong safety. I think cross is more of a, than in the box guy, more like what the Steelers have traditionally had and done. But uh, I think he's a guy that, that sort of checks all the boxes for generally what they're looking for in a defensive back. Yeah. And he, effectively one of the best athletes at the position in their class. And if you know anything about the Steelers, what they like at safety, they need good athletes. And so obviously Terrell Edmonds is a great athlete. Minka Fitzpatrick is a great athlete. So they have two really great athletes. Trey Norwood was essentially against the grain in that regard, but they're likely going to draft another great athlete. Nick Cross is just that 4-3-4-40 at the combine, 37-inch vert. I mean, the guy is explosive, 11, 11 broad. I mean, the guy jumps out of the building. And, and so when you look at what he brings, good size, six foot two twelve, very similar frame type to Sean Davis, who also came out of Maryland, who was 6'1", uh, 210. So very similar size comparison there between the two. And obviously they have deep roots within the Maryland program, Matt Kennedy and people there. Uh, M- Mike Tomlin's good friends with, with head coach Mike Loxley over there. Um, this is These are very interconnected programs of Steelers to the Maryland program. So they know what goes on there. And Nick Cross is the type of player that I think fits what they need at that strong safety spot really well. 
because again, I think he's fluid too. I don't think he's just athletic. You know, I think the thing with Terrell Edmonds has always been, yeah, he's explosive and yeah, he's fast, but he's never been a guy that's been exceptionally quick. I think Cross is very quick. So I think you can put him in man coverage spots and bring him down in the slot if you need to as kind of that overhang player. Uh, and he can work in single high mode as well. He's done that. So this is a guy that comes pretty ready-made, but it's a pretty deep safety class. So you might be able to get Nick Cross in round three. And I think that's really good value. Yeah, and I think we I, I kind of I, I expect them to address the strong safety position somehow uh, before we get to the draft. But you know, I kind of expected that answer to be like a five-year contract for Terrell Edmonds and just sign him and, and have him here. But as this process goes on, I think it becomes much more likely that that starting strong safety ends up being a guy on a shorter contract, a one or two year deal. If it, if it is Edmonds or if it's not Edmonds, it's somebody older, uh, Kevin Colbert's comments about, they don't want to, you know, they, they want younger free agents, not older free agents. So if they're going to sign a guy and we, we broke down the list of, of players that are available. There's a lot of 29 and 30 on that list. There's not a lot of 26, right? So if they are going to sign a guy who's older. It's probably going to be to a shorter term contract, a two or three year deal. I can see them, signing a guy and then drafting a player like Nick Cross in the third round behind him and saying, okay, a year or two later, this is going to be our starting strong safety. And, and I think, you know, I, I think uh, could certainly be a good fit for them uh, for what they need at the position. And, and I think that would really address the position like long-term in a really meaningful way. That is the way the Steelers like to operate. They love that paradigm of like, here's the starter, here's the next starter. And I think, you know, with the with the cap space that Kevin Colbert has had to work with this year, you've seen him get more back to that. Like he had kind of gotten away from that the last few years, where they were drafting to fill immediate holes uh, on the team that they needed right now. But really, what made them good for most of his tenure was his ability to draft for next year's holes. And so, if they sign a strong safety and then draft Nick Cross, that's drafting for next year's hole. And I think that makes a lot of sense, or actually maybe two years from now hole. Uh, but but uh, I, I think because they've had cap space and they've been able to add to the team through free agency this time, uh, they they're now in a position where they don't have that many. Assuming they take care of strong safety, they don't have that many glaring holes. He said twenty four out of twenty five. I think there's actually two spots: it's strong safety and slot receiver that I would say certainly need addressed before the draft or will be holes going into the draft. But I, you know, I, I I think they're in a pretty good spot to do that. And you know, I, that makes our job a little bit more difficult, right? Because when when there aren't any obvious holes, it's a lot harder to predict which way they're going. Uh, Brandon Hunt going to the Maryland Pro Day, to me, not as uh, significant as a Colbert or a Talma going there, but that says they're at least somewhat serious about uh, about the player. Yeah, and I agree with that. And Nick Cross is kind of Terrell Edmonds done right. You don't throw him into the fire. Now, obviously, that, that the plan was to let Edmonds sit. Morgan Burnett ended up being terrible. And that's kind of what happened there. But you got to wonder what they're going to do at that spot in free agency. Because as the time goes on, more and more guys are coming up the board. You know, Jabril Peppers just got signed. There's the smoke. I mean, what happens? I guess this is the scenario I think that I would bring up to you and, and kind of talk through this. What happens if they do sign Tyron Matthew? 29 years old, but he's Tyron Matthew. So how is this a Joe Hayden like situation where you could keep Tyron Matthew for three, four years and you have him and Minka there long term? Is he an actual long term answer? I know he's only, he's only 29, but when Joe Hayden came to Pittsburgh, he was what 27, 28. He stayed through his age 32 season. So what happens there if they do sign Tyron Matthew? And obviously you don't plan to sign Tyron Matthew if you don't 100 percent know. But I kind of wonder how that, that changes things. If Matthew does land in Pittsburgh, what that contract looks like, and more importantly, how that changes the draft strategy at the strong safety position. Yeah, I think that's certainly a good point. And, you know, it is a deep safety class too. So, you know, that, that there can be like multiple different answers, right? I mean, if they think Kyle Hamilton is going to be there in the first round, maybe they don't sign a safety at all <laughs> and then they just get like a plug and play option right i mean I, I think kevin colbert was at his pro day uh at notre dame now uh, i don't think he's going to be available at 20 but maybe he has been falling down some draft boards maybe that is an option for them there as well 
And then they just don't sign one and they say, okay, our first round picks a strong safety. That would be a big zag from where most people think they're headed, but um, I-, I wouldn't rule it out. Like, well, well, if he's, you know, the, the reported time he ran uh, Kyle Hamilton was in the, was almost four seven, I think at, at his pro day. Now he ran a four five nine in Indianapolis, but a lot of scouts believe that the Indianapolis track is here was fast tracked. And so you go to Notre Dame for a day and he runs a four seven, and that is, is going to raise some eyebrows. And, and some teams that, that are going to be in that top 10 discussion, you know, the Jets, for example, at 4 and 10, they might take Sauce Gardner and an edge rusher or Dick Drake London or someone like that over Kyle Hamilton now. Uh, and who knows if he falls because there, there are a lot of options between 11 and 20 that make sense for him. The, the Ravens make sense. The Commanders make sense. The Eagles have three picks there. It's kind of hard not to see them jump on him with one of those three. Uh, I mean, there are so many openings that make sense for Kyle Hamilton. But he said the same thing about David DeCastro. He said the same thing about Derwin James. Like, O.J. Howard had a, had a big draft day fall. I mean, the, there are some of these guys that are often thought of as great talents, but they play positions like guard, safety, tight end running back and they fall down the board a little bit because the NFL perceives these positions to maybe not be as superly valuable I guess so they'll take a they'll they'll take the fourth corner off the board as opposed to first safety which is honestly wrong but still it's kind of how they've operated so never say never and Steelers clearly have been hearing some of that smoke because I don't think they would have gone to Notre Dame's pro day for really any other reason other than to see Kyle Hamilton. I mean, they have some guys, you know, they have Kyron Williams, they have Kevin Austin. Uh, they have some players there, but the main attraction is 100% Kyle Hamilton. So I think Colbert went there to just in case, if that happens, if the catch situation arises, they are prepared to take Kyle Hamilton in 20. Yep. A couple other uh, pro days yesterday. Uh, Wake Forest uh, tackles Zach Tom is one of those guys that, uh, we're talking about the day, early day three, maybe uh, a tackle prospect uh, in, in that group. And also Baylor, Taekwon Thornton uh, ran himself straight out of the combine. And then uh, Jalen Petrie is a corner. I think both of those guys line up with the Steelers' needs at those positions. Yeah. And Zach Tom's an interesting player. Got to see him live uh, in the ACC championship. And I thought he looked really good, honestly. I mean, that Wake Forest offensive line had a bad game. I did not think he was one of those guys that did. He looks quick. He's big. He's got good prototypical size. He's a really fascinating prospect because what you get in Zach Tom is you get a lot of physical tools, and you get a guy that's pretty good above the neck. And he also has experience, and, and this is something to note, while he's a left tackle, he also has experience at center. So you have flexibility, right? Mason Cole did that switch too from tackle to center. Tom did the opposite. He went from center to left tackle. So that's kind of interesting. So you get that versatility. He's perfect for his zone scheme. He needs to get more strong, but he's a developmental guy that when he is good, I think could be like his versatile kind of swing piece you have at tackle. He, If they would draft him, he would be the Joe Hank replacement in other words. And I think a pretty solid one doesn't need a ton of development and looks pretty solid. Yeah. And I think, you know, there's, it's, it's a Joe Hague replacement. Also Zach Banner was a guy that they were kind of hoping would be available to them in that role. And obviously things didn't work out with his knee and, and he was released. And so I do think if you look at, you know, most of the time, the way the Steelers have operated, that swing tackle has been a guy that they want to be a developmental player that they want to give some some small chunk opportunities to to see if that player can grow into something bigger they did it with a guy like chris hubbard they did it with matt filer they tried to do it with banner Haig doesn't really fit that mold right he was like a free agent they, they got in he doesn't really have the potential to be a lot more than he is i think they'd like to get back to having that swing tackle be someone that can be a guy that they can hope on for the future and develop into a player. I think they want to get back to that mold. So Tom is one of, there's a lot of guys that fit that role. There are, I don't know, a dozen uh, early day three, late day two kind of tackles that I think could fit that realm. And, and he's certainly one of them. 
Yes, certainly is. And there, as you said, there's plenty of other players. Not all of them have that center experience that Tom does, which could throw in the kind of the range. But there are other guys like Derek Rosenthal from Kentucky. Uh, I think is an interesting option. Kellen Deesh from Arizona State. Max Mitchell, I think, in round four is a very interesting one. Stuber from Michigan. Um, well, let's go from North Dakota. You got Braxton Jones from Southern Utah, uh, I think is a really interesting option. I, I think you and I were both in Mobile. I think both were pretty impressed by what Braxton Jones did down Ooh, there. A few I, linemen in Mobile that I thought had a good week. I thought, I thought in general, the offensive linemen there did not really uh, impress me that much, but I was kind of blown away by his pass protection, especially, which is, I mean, coming from Southern Utah, I didn't have any expectations. I, I thought he was really good. Um, yeah, Bernard I Raymond that- is a guy that I think, like, he's being talked about as being like a day two pick and, and maybe even a first round pick. And I didn't think he was anywhere near as good as, as Jones was. And he's talking about being in a fourth round pick. Yeah. Jones is like the type of player the Steelers like to take risks on, you know, that small school guy that shows out those all-star games that proves every time he goes up against better competition, he plays at a high level. That's the type of guy you got. He has great tools. I mean, he's six, seven, almost six, eight, has go-go gadget arms. Uh, I mean, he he's really polished and passed for now. Still has to work on a few things, but a guy that's experienced, a guy that would fit the Canada scheme, and a guy that makes a ton of sense, I think, if they can get him. I mean, that might be a third-round option for them more so. I think I think Jones has done really well for himself in this process, um, but I think it would be a, a good option. But as you said, tons of options here at tackle uh, going down the board. Even later, you, guys, you get guys like Obina Easy, of a Darian Lowe, Tyler Vrabel, Luke Tenuta, guys later. To, so that is an option, I, I think. But they're going to try and, I think, fill this fourth tackle spot through the track. Yep, I agree. And uh, I think that's a good place for us to break here today. Let's uh, let's go into Friday with some questions. Let's uh, let's get some comments going and, and see what you guys want to know about, where the Steelers, what the Steelers have done, where the Steelers are going uh, and then maybe next week as pro days kind of wind down, we'll get into the position by position breakdown uh, that we always do. Uh, Nick, uh, anything uh, else going on for you this week? I know you covered some baseball last night. How was that? I did. Yes. Yeah, called the uh, West Virginia hit backer brawl game. That was impromptu. That was pretty cool. Uh, and got more coming, coming this weekend, covering some softball and all that. And tons of, tons of good things coming up and, you know, I, I am paying attention still on the Steelers' side to some of these pro days later in the week, like Kentucky, um, see who they send there. As we know, Colbert's done his four trips, so he's done for the week. But Mike Tomlin will be free. So is Mike Tomlin going to take a trip by himself? Or is Brandon Hunt going to do some scouting around? Or position coaches, it'll be something to watch. Yep, I agree. And uh, we'll be back, and then we'll uh... – We'll continue this all the way up to the 2022 NFL draft. So uh, follow along. Make sure you hit the like and subscribe button on the YouTube channel. If you're watching through that platform, also uh, we're available through Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, every other place you can find a podcast, basically. So check us out that way as well. And we'll be back with more on the 2022 NFL draft tomorrow. For Nick, I'm Alan. Thanks for listening. Enjoy the rest of your day.